I'm Kelly from North Shore Eye Care. Today I am sitting with Dr. Sam Baristani. We are going to be talking about Botox. And if you don't mind, Dr. Baristani, would you just tell everybody a little bit about what you do before we start talking about Botox? Sure. So I'm an ophthalmic plastic surgeon here at North Shore Eye Care. What that means is that we take care of cosmetic and reconstructive problems around the eyes and how that relates to the way the eyes interact with the face, the forehead, and the mid face in general. And um, so we take care of all sorts of problems, patients who come in and just have droopy eyelids, all sorts of lumps and bumps that appear around the eyes, patients who have tearing, and obviously skin cancers and tumors around the eyes as well. So it's all sorts of cosmetic and reconstructive things. We do plenty of minor procedures in the office for patients who are looking for cosmetic enhancements like Botox and fillers like we're going to talk about today. Okay, good. Um, so a little bit about Botox. Can you give us a little bit of some back information, like maybe when Botox first became popular, why? Because I know it originally was for something completely different than what most yeah. people use it for now. Absolutely. Actually, as eye surgeons, we're, we have the most experience with Botox. Mm -hmm. Back many years ago, Alan Scott, an ophthalmologist in San Francisco, first started using Botox to treat kids who had crossed eyes. After seeing that these patients had a relaxation of some of the wrinkles around their eyes, and not only kids, but this was used to treat adults, right. people started to use the cosmetic benefits of this. And since then, not only ophthalmologists, but dermatologists and plastic surgeons have been using the cosmetic benefits of Botox to get rid of fine lines and wrinkles, not only around the eyes, but around the face as well. So it's been many years that we've been using this safe medication to inject around the face to get rid of fine lines and wrinkles. And um, so what are some of the reasons besides just cosmetic, and you also said cross I know there's other reasons why yeah. people would want it. Nowadays, we don't use Botox so much for people who have crossed eyes, um, right. at least for a medical reason. Botox is usually used medically for patients who have spasms around the eyes, a condition called blepharospasm. Right. Some people get spasms on one side. It's a condition called myokymia. And people can get spasms uh, on one side of their face, kind of like a hemifacial spasm related to something that's going on with the nerves that take care of facial expression or movement around the face. So Botox can actually be used for those indications too, not only for cosmetic reasons. And what about, um, I've been hearing people using it for migraines, is yeah. there a lot of... Yeah, nowadays that's one of the latest uses for Botox is plenty of people come in and they have headaches and they're either not good candidates for taking the traditional medicines that we use for Botox uh, or for migraines, I should right. say, and they start uh, and we've been treating them very effectively with Botox, so that, that works really great. Does somebody necessarily need to do it more frequently if they're coming in to treat for headaches than they would if they're just doing it? Good question. No, not necessarily. So usually the way Botox works is we will do the injections in the office. People start to see the effects within 48 to 72 hours, okay. and it usually lasts somewhere between three and four months before it wears off and they'll not need to come back for a retreatment. If we're treating something like headaches, sometimes we'll have to kind of make sure that we're giving them the right amount of the medication, especially if we're just meeting them, so they may have to come back sooner at the beginning. But once we find the right dose that's good for a particular patient, then we get pretty regular with their visits and follow-up. Interesting. Um, other things about it, What a, who's not really a good candidate? Are there anybody that's not a good candidate for Botox, for in your opinion? For cosmetic Botox, there are very few patients that actually wouldn't be good candidates for it. Very, very rarely people have allergic reactions to Botox or some of the ingredients in the Botox medications, and this is really, really rare. The only way to know for sure would, would be to actually have the injections and see that you have the reaction, or I guess if you did allergy testing beforehand, but we don't really worry about that at all. It is such a minor fraction of the population that actually has that problem. Is it like something that you would do a little bit less in the beginning just to see how the person responds, or is that not even necessary? Usually what happens is when a patient comes in for a consultation and they want Botox treatments, we'll give them the standard dose. Usually this is recommended by not only the FDA, but also by the, the makers of Botox as well. And for those patients, if they don't see the effect that they want to give, that they want to achieve, then we'll bring them back and either they have a stronger muscle or just need more Botox to treat their lines and wrinkles, so we'll bring them back and treat them with more. But usually there's a standard dose for each treatment area that, that we treat our patients with. Okay. Um, so how often does somebody necessarily get Botox? And is it, this is even more what I wanted to ask you, is it true that if you get Botox, it's better to do before 
the lines and the <laughs> wrinkles are really deep and set in? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that that's really the case. Okay. Um, I know a lot of times people are coming in to have cosmetic treatments at a younger age these days. Kind of the thinking with cosmetic procedure has really changed. It used to be back in the day that people would wait and they'd have you know fine lines and wrinkles, sagging, all that sort of stuff, and mm -hmm. they'd have a giant cosmetic procedure and they'd look, come out looking like a different person afterwards. Nowadays, people are trying to have more maintenance treatments where they'll have a little bit done at a time, and it's kind of the, the purpose of that is so they age gracefully and you don't notice these big dramatic effects that people are having with cosmetic procedures that they used to have in the past. So I, I'm not sure that it really works to prevent wrinkles, uh, as, as some people might believe, but people are coming in younger and younger and having these procedures done. So I've also been told that Botox actually will help stimulate and produce collagen. Is that true? I'm not sure that's necessarily true with Botox. Um, another thing that we do for cosmetic enhancement in the office is actually filler injections. Okay. And there are certain types of fillers that will stimulate collagen production and help to give a more reju rejuvenated, fuller look to the face. So it's not necessarily Botox that does that, but rather filler treatments or filler so injections. That that do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so before we go, is there anything else that you would like to add about Botox that you think viewers would want to know about and find interesting? Sure. So Botox is a really safe medical injectable that we have a lot of experience with, and many patients love having it done. It's great for people who want to dip their toe in the water in terms of cosmetic procedures because it is a temporary effect. And if you love it, great. Patients come back often and get treatment treated and retreated for it. If you don't like it, it kind of wears off. There are plenty of people that come in consistently every three to four months. So there shouldn't be any worry that you kind of get addicted to it because other patients will decide, okay, I love the way this looks and I'm just gonna come in and get treated when I have a special occasion. If I have a wedding coming up or I'm going to a vacation, some patients just look at it as if they're getting a haircut or getting a new dress to go to an event, something like that. They come in for their facial treatments as well. So it's kind of a great medication for all sorts of people. Great, all right, thank you. Thanks for coming and sitting and talking to me about sure. this. Thank you for watching our video. If you would like to set an appointment with Dr. Baristani, please call our office at 631-265-8787 and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out some of our other videos that we posted and shared, especially some with Dr. Barasani.